Surveys tell us that most cat owners have more than one cat. As a cat lover, we know you want what's best for all of your cats. We've worked with hundreds of cat owners in our professional lives. One of the most common problems we've seen is fighting among cats who live together in the same family. Many of these problems between family cats could have been prevented if only their owners had known a little bit more about cat behavior. By now, you've chosen a specific cat to come and join your family. How are you going to introduce your new cat to your resident cat? We strongly do not recommend just putting the cats together and letting them work out their differences. This is very unlikely to be successful. Instead, you want to micromanage the initial contacts your new cat and resident cat have with one another. To start, don't allow your cats to see one another when you bring the new cat home. Only allow the new cat and your resident cat to hear and smell one another and prevent direct physical or visual contact with each other. A good way to do this is to immediately put your new cat in one room of your house with all his necessities, food, water, litter box, scratching post, and toys behind a closed door. At this stage, you should also help your cats become accustomed to each other's scent. Take several old towels or washcloths and rub each cat with one. Take the item that has the new cat's scent on it and put it in areas around the house where your resident cat likes to be. Do the same thing with the item that has your resident cat scent. Take it into the room where the new cat is temporarily confined and put it underneath her food dish and perhaps on her bed or on a window perch. Putting the towels on favorite resting places and under food dishes helps each cat associate the other with pleasant experiences. Swap locations. Once your new cat seems to be fairly comfortable in the room you've selected for her and no longer seems to be afraid of her new surroundings, switch locations between the cats. Put your resident cat in a room where the new cat was confined and allow your new cat freedom in the house to explore her new digs. You also need to begin staging controlled cat encounters on either side of the door where one cat is confined. Your goal is to encourage both cats to approach their side of the door by making something good happen when they do. This will help each cat associate the other with pleasant feelings. The good things you use as part of the encounters should be anything either cat likes. Your ultimate goal, after many repetitions, is to have both cats approach the door without any signs of fear, aggression, or defensive behavior. Continue staging these encounters until you can have each cat on either side of the door and both are remaining comfortable and calm. Continue keeping the cat separate, still switching locations on a regular schedule, and working with your staged encounters until you can accomplish these goals of seeing friendly, relaxed behaviors from both cats. When your cats are ready, the next step is to allow very limited visual encounters between them. One way to do this is to purchase two of the small plastic wedge type door stops and wedge the door open to the confinement room just a few inches from either side. That way, neither cat can push the door open too far and have more contact with the other than they're ready for. As you continue to practice encounters, you can gradually wedge the door open a little bit more, a little bit more at a time. Another way to allow limited and controlled visual and physical contact with one another is to put one of the cats in a crate or carrier. If you use this option, be sure that you acclimate the cat to the crate before you use it in the introduction process. You might want to alternate having each cat in the crate and allow one cat to come up and sniff the other when he's confined. If you have a wire crate, cover the crate with a blanket or towel so that only one side of the crate is open to allow visual encounters between the cats. Without this, the cat in the wire crate may feel too exposed and vulnerable and become fearful or defensive. Another alternative is to confine each cat in a crate and gradually bring the crates closer together as the cats become more calm and relaxed. Before you allow your cats unrestrained contact with one another for short time periods, you'd like to see some displays of friendly behaviors between the two. A typical greeting between two friendly cats is for them to approach and sniff noses. 
Once your cats are showing these friendly behaviors with whatever restraint or barrier system you are using, begin to allow them short periods of unrestrained contact with each other. Do not leave them alone together just yet. The biggest mistake we see people make with cat introductions is to do too much too soon. It's much better to take things slowly and be conservative than to have to deal with problems that are created from rushed introductions. While you're working on introducing your cats to one another, you can make small changes in your home to minimize potential sources of conflicts between your cats once the introduction phase is complete. Put food bowls in more than one location to accommodate social separation or social distance between your cats when they're eating. You'll also want to provide your cats with several different scratching objects in multiple locations. Each cat may have a different preference as to what they like to scratch and where they like to scratch. You'll also want to provide your cats with multiple resting sites, observation locations, or window perches. Cats love to lay in the sunshine and look out the window and nap on soft, comfortable surfaces. Be sure to have plenty of these available in your house. Favorite resting places and perches seem to be one thing cats do compete for, so you'll want to provide as many as possible. When their relationship is still in its developing stages, your cats may not be comfortable being with each other 24-7. So you'll want to provide hiding places and safe places where they can go to be by themselves for a while and avoid one another if they choose. Some of these hiding places should be high, because we know that cats make use of vertical space to create social distance. Each cat also needs some one-on-one -on -one time with you. How much time each cat needs with you will depend on their social attachment to you and how much they like to be held and petted. Some cats may prefer you to actively play with them rather than just sit and cuddle, and some may like both. If you are paying attention to one cat and the other cat approaches, Try to minimize the chances that either cat will view this as a competitive situation. Last but not least, provide at least as many litter boxes as you have cats. By doing so, you'll ensure that there is always one vacant litter box if any cat needs one. Do not position the litter boxes adjacent to one another in the same area. Remember the personal space issues. As your cats are getting to know one another, they likely will not feel comfortable using a litter box if the other cat is right next door. As much as possible, keep your resident cat's routine the same as it was before your new cat arrived. Obviously, there will be some avoidable changes in scheduling, but the more consistent your resident cat's routines can stay, the better. What if you encounter problems? What should you do if you have problems, either during the introduction process or after your cats have begun to live together and start to have conflicts? Your first step should be to separate the cats. The more your cats fight with or harass one another, the more difficult these behaviors are to change. These patterns can quickly become your cat's normal way of interacting with each other if you fail to take action rapidly. Next, try to reintroduce your cats using the procedures we just described. Perhaps you rushed the introductions and didn't really allow the cats to get comfortable with each other at each step before you took the next step. Also take a close look at your indoor environment and make sure you follow the recommendations we just gave you for minimizing competition and conflict among the cats. If your cats still aren't getting along, it's time to bring in professional help. First, talk to your veterinarian to make sure all of your cats are healthy. If they are, you'll want to have your veterinarian, animal shelter, or other pet professional recommend a certified applied or veterinary behaviorist who has experience in dealing with cats. Sometimes medication may be necessary for one or both cats to help reduce the conflicts between them. Only your veterinarian can prescribe medications. Medications should be combined with behavior modification techniques. By themselves, medications are rarely successful in helping your cats get along better. Medication is only a short-term solution or adjunct to behavior modification techniques that can help create longer-lasting, friendly relationships among your cats. If your cats are having problems with one another, don't allow the situation to continue unattended. It's not acceptable for one cat to be frightened all the time or continually harassed so that she's constantly hiding or stressed or trying to avoid the other cats in the family. If one of your cats is always hiding and is afraid to move around your house, 
as a responsible, caring cat owner, you need to take action. Either try to resolve the problem yourself or call in a behavior specialist to help you. If you feel you can't spend the time and effort necessary to help your cats get along better, or if despite your best efforts, your cat's relationship is not improving, then it's time to find a home for one of the cats. All of your cats deserve the best quality of life possible. Being constantly harassed or under attack does not represent a good quality of life. Unfortunately, not all cats can learn to live together peaceably. But if you take a proactive approach and follow all the recommendations we've given you in this presentation, you'll have a much better chance of your cats forming friendly, healthy relationships.